It all started when um, my girlfriend, she uh, bought me a vinyl of AT Aliens for my birthday and she um, gave it to her sister and had her sister send it to Outkast's uh, role manager and said, could you sign this for my sister's boyfriend? And um, he was like, not only will we sign it, but we'll have him call him on his birthday. My birthday came and I'm like, oh, sh you know what I'm saying? I'm cursing and everything. And then I'm just like, I'm giving him the elevator pitch. And so long story short, a couple months ago, he's like, man, we're coming to Chicago on May 1st. You want to open a spot? Ladies and gentlemen, make some So sound check came and I'm waiting on my band member to get there. But if you know, like I know the sh traffic in Chicago is monstrous. So at this time it's about five o'clock and that's like gridlock traffic on the Kennedy. By the time sound check comes, it's just me and my DJ. I'm gonna kill you for the second track, number. Yeah. Are you ready? All right. Five, six, seven, eight. All right. You wasn't ready, was you? <laughs> Are you ready? Five, six, seven, eight. I ain't been sitting over there just watching. Won't you come meet the queen? a tad bit nervous but basically the reason why I didn't do like a full out sound check is because there was other uh, stage sets there were other instruments on stage first thing I was thinking is where my dance is gonna go so we got to kind of deal with the small space that we have and so um, I realized that me as an artist I wasn't gonna be doing that much moving around I was gonna stay in this little central area in the middle oh yeah cool we know George I'm gonna get here <laughs> huh I'm cool, man. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Angelo hit me up and he came by the um, by the green room and he was like, "Hey, man, you want to come meet Killer Mike?" And I'm like, "Cool." So we uh, we head on out to the trailer and um, we come on the trailer and I'm like, "Man, this is this is Killer Mike. This is Killer Kill from the Ville. You know what I'm saying? Adamsville representative." And I'm a fan of Killer Mike's music. He's on the bus. We on the tour bus, just chopping it up, man, about politics, about life. And the youth and things like that because he's a um, he's definitely a revolutionary. Yeah, a lot of the shorties, man, they just um they I feel like they lashing out. You know what I'm saying? Like especially shorties in Chicago because they don't have a they don't have an outlet. And at the same time, how you supposed to know better if you was never taught better? They sure don't have no fault. You know what I'm saying? They ain't no Straight up, they ain't got no fault. Mm. But everybody search for what's missing in the mix. Oh, we don't have enough libraries. We don't have enough books. We don't have a mentorship program. We don't have fathers. Mm -hmm. When Giants ever got killed on motherfucking good times, everything went bad after that. You know? mm -hmm. And that's real shit. Like I said jokingly, but mm -hmm. that's it. You don't have no real male mentors in your family. We got to have a nice little conversation. And uh, he told me that he uh, he heard my music and he, he liked my message. So that meant a lot to me. And so uh, next thing you know, we in mid conversation and boom, Big Boy walks in. I'm like, oh man, it's Big Boy. Daddy Fat Sacks, a.k.a. Villa Ocean, a.k.a. Lucius Leftfoot, a.k.a. Francis the Savannah Chitlin Pimp. So he comes in, and I'm like, man, he just comes because he uh, he got to throw the first baseball at the uh, Cubs game. They, they were just, they were laid back. And that was cool because, you know, you have, you have preconceived notions about celebrities because of what you see on TV or what you hear. And um, a lot of times they can be, you know, vicious lies and dangerous rumors. Get it popping. 
They got me on the marquee and they made an at sign. They made an at sign for me. I can appreciate that. I appreciate that. They made the at sign for me. Angelo has been a, um, he, he's a real, he's a real down brother, man. Real positive, real positive brother, man. Ever since I met him, he's always been enthusiastic and um, and always shown a genuine love. You know, it's the fact that um, he got a chance to meet other people that I work with that he's heard about. Oh man, this, this is my man. Yeah, this man, is the, this is the official. Yeah, man, what's up, sir? This is, uh, this is the bow tie dealer. Yeah, this man. Is Angelo I'm like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. He, he came in ID. He said he just posted up on stage with, with the briefcase open. Yeah, like, so that's, can, that's you know. right. like for example, when he got to meet Authentic May, he's like, oh man, I finally get to put a name with a face. It was a real dope interaction. What's going on, man? How y'all feel? <laughs> I mean, we just had a hike. I don't know if they got the writer that said I needed a bowl of M&M's. Only, only green. Green ones, right? Yep. Yeah. Only green. Green for the money. Angela, ready to meet Dr. Authentic May. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I heard a lot of boxing man seeing a lot of videos. Oh, oh. You know, with a little boo boo, all that. That's what's up, man. We'll have a real talk, man. Me and you and Brandon, we're gonna have a serious talk, okay? We got a direction and see how things going. We got a lot of people on board. A drummer, support your special. How you doing? Nice to meet you. All right, I got something you can touch that up with. Cool. Like, get the car? That bag can't take that. Yes, sir. You got a whole crew looking. Drummer with him. I'm feeling nervous. Show him the show. 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 Show him the a drummer, a keyboardist, and a DJ, and that they would have, uh, I would need three red bow ties for them, and then I want a red polka dot one, right? So he was like, all right, no problem, I'm gonna bring through. So he comes through with the briefcase. It's funny, because you know, people bring briefcases, they usually have documents and everything, so it looked kind of real uh, covert. Show out, show up, show out. There's a lot of people in the dress room, so when I walked in there, I felt, I felt great, because it's like everybody's working. It's like coming in a factory, and you see this machine over here working, and that machine over there working. I'm looking at the clock, and I'm counting down like 22 where minutes to show time. 12 minutes. Yeah, we got eight minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes, W fresh. And so then uh, Angelo comes in, and he's like, yo, it's 10 minutes showtime. He was like, we're going to start five minutes late. He said, so you could actually go on now and take a five extra minutes or not. Now, listen, I want two things. I throw you on now, and you more time. You know the song so in there? The inner MC in me said take the extra five, but I didn't have anything prepared and I didn't want to do anything impromptu after we already rehearsed a nice 10 minutes with the band. And so I, I declined the extra five because I want everything to be together um, and I want everything to be perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise! Come up to the stage, represent Chicago. Chicago's in the building, make some noise! My dancers are ready, my drummer's ready, my keyboardist is ready, we ready to go. Everybody come here, put your hands up one time. Alright, so I want to introduce uh, one of my sisters that's going to come and rock a track for y'all. So give her a nice little sauce, golf clap, make some noise, make some noise. Coming up to the stage, make some noise for the lovely, incomparable Soulja. Very important for Soulja to come because she sings the hook on Count It Up. Plus, she's just a dope individual anyway. She does poetry and she can rap too, but she just sings very well. Hey, you sitting over there just watching. Won't you come get with me? As she's doing that, the band is kind of playing with her and then you know what I'm saying authentic man he on the keys playing real real jazzy and nice and so then she comes in you know and then when they ready she give me the cue five six five six seven eight stage was kind of small but I'm working with it like okay we're gonna work in a small space I'm really thankful for my dancers because the dancers are moving. I don't have to be. You got to give them something different than just the music. Here we go. Break it down. Whether you're a DJ or an MC or something, when you're controlling the crowd, 
you kind of lead the energy. So if you're not into it, the crowd doesn't have a reason to be into it. For those who don't know, my producer, Authentic Made, AKA George Jackson the third, he plays seven live instruments working on the eighth one and he sings. So it was great to see him play different melodies of the song and pitches. My man Isaac, it's very important man that, that he did the drums because the songs that I performed had a live drum sound in it. So I wanted to bring that to life. And he's one of the best drummers I've heard. Well, Dougie, he's one of the greatest scratch artists that I've seen as far as like just cutting and beat juggling and everything. He's pretty ill. It was great for all of them to be there and um, add to the live performance. People put hard work in to bring you guys real music, new music. If y'all feel no man for real, y'all gotta tell other people that y'all love it. So, so tweet about him, talk about him. Let's make him a superstar. He is a superstar. Let's keep it going, y'all. Come on, time, real time. Thank y'all for watching. Coming up next, another phenomenal band. So I get off stage, Chicago. Everything is great. He pulls me aside. He's like, AB, hey, you wanna you wanna open in Atlanta? Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby.